So I'm super excited today because today we're going to talk about accessories. And there are all kinds of different accessories you can have. Everything from bracelets to necklaces. I'm a big fan of accessorizing. You want organs? Seriously? Organs? Ugh. Dang it. The first organ we're going to talk about is your liver. Your liver has a multitude of different segments to it. The important thing about those segments is that that helps it to regenerate. And since it's an organ that deals with a lot of toxins, that's actually a really good thing. It turns out that you can come back from having more than a third of your liver taken away. It basically will regrow over time because it's made to replace its cells since they're sometimes killed off by the toxins that they're digesting for the rest of your body. Now, in terms of digestion, the important thing about the liver is that the liver is going to be involved in creation of bile, which is going to help you to digest fats. What bile does is it emulsifies those fats. That means it breaks them down into really small globs. By breaking them into small globs, it makes it easier for the lipases, the enzymes which digest those fats, to be able to get at those fats and start digesting them. The bile then exits the liver through the hepatic duct. It goes through the common hepatic duct to the cystic duct, which goes to the gallbladder. In the gallbladder, that bile is going to be concentrated. Why are we concentrating it? Well, that way when you eat a fatty meal, that gallbladder is going to contract and it's going to release that bile into your duodenum. Once it's released into your duodenum, now you can digest fats. What happens if you don't have a gallbladder? If you don't have a gallbladder, the bile is just going to go direct from the liver to the duodenum and that's not a problem. Your system will likely be able to learn to continue to produce enough bile to keep up with the demand of your intestines. So let's talk about what triggers this release of bile from the gallbladder. When there is fat in, this, in the duodenum, that is sensed by cells, and those cells release a hormone called cholecystokinin, or you can just call it CCK for short, and CCK causes that gallbladder to contract. So basically, it's telling the duodenum is saying, hey, there's fat in here, and the gallbladder is contracting to release the stuff that helps the enzymes digest fat. So you're not releasing it all the time, you're releasing it when you've got, a fat, when you've got fat in your system. So let's move on to the next digestive accessory organ, the pancreas. The pancreas secretes several things that help with digestion. Some of these are enzymes. Examples of these enzymes would be lipases, which digest fats, proteases, which break down proteins, and amylases, which break down starches. In addition to releasing these enzymes, the pancreas also releases bicarbonate. The bicarbonate is used to neutralize the acid that comes from the stomach. So what triggers the release of all this stuff from the pancreas? Well, cholecystokinin, which we just learned about with the gallbladder, also causes the contraction of the pancreas. In causing contraction of the pancreas, it causes it to release those enzymes. But what causes it to release the bicarbonate? When there is acidic chyme within the duodenum, the, a hormone is released called secretin. And what secretin does is it causes that pancreas to release bicarbonate. In addition, secretin also inhibits the secretion of gastrin. Remember, gastrin is the hormone that has the stomach make acid in the first place. So basically what's going on is once you get acidic chyme in the duodenum, the duodenum is sending a signal via the pancreas that says, whoa, stomach, all right, stop with the digestive juice secretions. We're working on things here. Please don't send us any more. And that gives that um, the intestines time to work and break down the food with those enzymes. You may wonder, why do they even bother neutralizing the acid? Well, remember that enzymes work at specific pHs. The enzyme released in your stomach, pepsin, only works really at that pH of two. So by neutralizing the acid, we're both turning off that pepsin and we're turning on a whole host of other enzymes that we've just released into the digestive tract by getting them to their optimal, their optimal pH. How do these digestive juices get into the duodenum? Well, your pancreas has a pancreatic duct, and it's going to release its secretions into that duct. That duct is then going to join up with the common bile duct, and that is where they're going to join into the duodenum and empty 
their contents. So let's do a quick little rundown review of what we've covered here today. Remember that we're starting at the duodenum, which basically is getting material from the stomach. Your stomach has been releasing acid and pepsinogen, which has been made into pepsin, to start digesting food. Once that acidic chyme reaches that duodenum, the duodenum is going to release a hormone called secretin. Secretin is gonna cause the pancreas to contract and start to release bicarbonate, which is going to neutralize the pH of the material inside that duodenum. In addition, once fats reach the duodenum, you're gonna have the release of cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin is going to cause the gallbladder to release, which is going to release bile, and that bile is going to emulsify the fats, breaking them into smaller chunks. It's also going to cause the pancreas to contract. That pancreatic contraction is going to release pancreatic enzymes. One of those enzymes is lipase, which is going to be involved in the digestion of those fats. It's important to remember that secretin inhibits the release of gastrin. So at this point, not only are we sort of getting ready for what's gonna go on the intestines, which is the enzymatic breakdown of this material so that it can be absorbed, but we're also stopping the previous steps. We're stopping the stomach from making more acid because we don't need that now. The material has moved on, it's in the intestines now, we don't need more stomach secretions.